Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Mail! Santee, could you do a video about holsters in the Old West? Dustin Weiniger. Dustin. Dustin Weiniger. Yeah, we can do one on the holsters. Roll them. If you carry a sidearm, you gotta put it in something that will protect it from the elements and allow you to get to it quickly. Enter the holster, also known as the scabbard. They were usually made of a thick russet leather, which offered a sturdy sheath that didn't scratch the gun's finish or hinder the draw, and they were attached to the belts with a loop. Early holster styles like the California or Slim Jim had a recurve at the throat of the holster to offer quick access to the trigger and the hammer. This style proved successful and is still in use today. The toe was typically sewn or plugged to keep mud and water from splashing up into the barrel of the gun. During the Civil War, the standard holsters had a flap that completely covered the sidearm. Many veterans who migrated west after the conflict kept these holsters and modified them for the new threats on the frontier. After all, the plan was to shuck that gun quickly and get to work. However, as guns moved from cap and ball to cartridge, belts became wider to accommodate the bullets and some of those old Slim Jims didn't fit anymore. Frontiersmen needed a holster that could fit a variety of belts. In came the Mexican loop holster. It had a flap called a skirt that flipped over the belt and reconnected to the holster with loops. This style could fit the width of the new belts and over a strip of cartridges if need be. These holsters were available in catalogs and made oversized so that they could fit a variety of guns. In the Old West, some towns had a law forbidding the carrying of firearms. Well, Westerners didn't like going anywhere without a gun, so many would conceal one in a pocket. John Wesley Harden, a notorious gunman, had leather lining sewn into his jacket pockets for this very purpose. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Come on, dude. By the 1880s, the Cheyenne style came about. The pouch that held the revolver had a swell that nestled between the loops to keep the holster from sliding around during the draw. A hand-tooled holster was all the rage, and folks who had a few extra dollars could get theirs customized with intricate flowers and designs. Today we have a resurgence in gun leather thanks to all the shooting sports and reenactors. Leather workers are putting out period-correct leather as well as catering to the modern competitors. Steel-lined holsters provide essentially a bucket for the gun to sit in so you can get it out in blazing fast speeds. I'm sure the gun toters of the 1800s would be very impressed. Well, that's an overview of holsters in the Old West. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to do a series of other holster videos in the future. As you can see, I, uh, I have a lot of holsters, many of which I've made by myself. But each holster serves a different purpose for a different persona that I have. And that's why I like to have a lot of them. But my all-time favorite go-to holster is this one right here. Inspired by the movie 310 to Yuma, Russell Crowe wore it. It's called the Hand of God holster. Will Gormley makes a pattern for it, and if you want to know a little bit more about him, you can look down in the description field, there's a link for him. But I made this holster a few years ago, and I just love it. I love the look of it, I love the design of it, and it's actually really easy to get a gun out of, so uh, I like that too. Um, yeah, ultimately it's my very favorite, very favorite holster. Apparently, it's Bill's favorite holster, too. I'll get that back later. In the meantime, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on down the trail. This one is, I, I just love the look of it. I just love the look of this holster. I just love it. So, anyway.